Despite the growth of industrial areas and modern means of transport, there still remain in rural England secluded places that are bypassed by the major highways and are perfect havens of retreat, where one can enjoy the charm of simplicity and peace. Such a region may be found in the green valley that lies east of the Malvern. For here, time passes by and the clock stands still. A black and white inn displays its latest sign, dated August the 20th, to commemorate the last visit here of Queen Elizabeth I. That was in 1575. And the village is that of Elmley Castle, a few miles west of the town of Evesham. Nearby is a similar retreat in the sleepy village of Overbury. A weathered porch leads to a fine old church, crowning the village and acting as guardian. Flowering bushes, carefully pruned towards the ground, droop their blossoms over the lichen-covered gravestone. Beyond is the facade of the great mansion of Overbury Court in mellow Cotswold stone. This yellow stone, in which the medieval forefathers of the region loved to build their hamlets, is here very much in evidence. The gates of the mansion form an imposing approach to lovely parkland. The richness of setting though one of sharp contrast, blends harmoniously with the simplicity of the village street, with rustic post office and row of tiny cottages with quaint porches and dormer windows. Here, trim lawns are bordered by a profusion of primulas of every hue. A special pride is taken in the pansy beds, of which a fine example is seen in this stone pedestal. To the south of the village, beyond the furrows of rich soil where green peas are already sprouting, rise the wooded slopes of Breeden Hill, the southern wall of the lovely Vale of Evesham, known as the Garden of the West. The village of Breeden itself is a secluded retreat notable for its fine old church. Down quiet lanes from the village, the approach to the church is bordered with Cotswold stone under a canopy of flowering trees. Breeden is noted in song and story as the hill of the Shropshire Lad. It is not an unusual sight in this lovely region to see a cherry orchard also devoted to pig farming. This fertile valley of orchards and cottage gardens is watered by the broad stream of the River Severn and sheltered in the west by the blue range of the Morgan.
A little further to the north, we reach a famous waterway, the Worcester and Birmingham Canal, whose banks are almost concealed by pampas grass. The distant chug of an engine is heard, and a barge glides past with a cargo for the north. But there are other surprises in this secluded valley. Tucked away on a hillside, in the small village of Snipe, near Worcester, is the unique garden of Harvey D. This is in fact an extensive and fanciful creation in mosaic, made entirely from seashells and small fragments of broken china and colored glass. The mosaic work is set with beds in readiness for summer flowers. The garden is the result of continuous and painstaking effort on the part of the owner of the cottage, Mr. Dowdswood, a retired engineer who for the last 35 years has made it his pride and the object of his undivided attention. A fairly recent addition is this terrace and tablet commemorating the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II. As the garden grew, ambition grew with it embracing the construction of a manor house and a church. The figures that adorn the garden are not the least of this achievement, and Harvey Dean, with its pillars, fancy arcading and terraces, gradually developed from a small beginning to the delightful novelty we see today. As yet, it is early spring, and later the ornamental beds are bright with summer flowers. But at all times, the garden is a sight not easily forgotten, as much for its beauty as for its originality of conception. In the ancient capital city of Worcester, the smooth water of the River Severn is disturbed by the sudden flight of swans. Close by is a ruined church tower, particularly slender in its construction. Rising from green lawns and ornamental flower beds, its one-time nave is now a garden of remembrance. A massive arch with niches bearing the figures of saints leads to the cathedral close. The Cathedral of Worcester has played a very prominent part in our island story and is rich in memories of the past. Worcester was the seat of a Saxon bishop in the 7th century. The foundation of the present cathedral was laid in the 10th century. Imposing ruins of the earlier fabric adjoin the cathedral itself. These are now little more than a few crumbled walls and bare arches.
On the river side of the cathedral, and rising from green lawns, are found the most ancient of these remains in brown sandstone, a monument to the changing times of a thousand years. Away to the west are the meadows and green slopes which herald the approach to the Malvern Hills. From the Herefordshire Beacon, where there are remains of prehistoric fortifications, still known as the British Camp, there is one of the most extensive views. The distant reservoir, the surrounding country with its checkered fields, the changing scene covering many counties. The road winds up through thickly wooded slopes to the crest of the hill. Over the western side, the view leads away to the distant counties of Wales. Descending into Great Malvern, trees weave fantastic patterns through which the spires of the Benedictine Priory can be seen. The famous health resort of Malvern, world renowned for the pure water of its springs, was formerly a Saxon religious settlement. With the Normans came the Benedictine Priory. After the dissolution of the monasteries, the Priory Church remained in perfect preservation. It is of cathedral-like size and plan with a 15th century central tower. Cloud and sunshine play curious tricks as evening shadows gather around the hills. The ancient town has seen another day. The little girl pats her pony good night as the sun goes down in a blaze of glory. 